Uh, anyways, but thank you for the nice introduction. <clears throat> I'm, I'm going to talk today about a set of plots for Cascade Head that's on the coast of Oregon, over by Lincoln City. And this has uh, been a focus of work uh, related to the Andrews for some time. It sounds odd, but actually in the IBP era, uh, Chuck Greer did a lot of work at Cascade Head because it's a very nice contrast to the Andrews. And uh, thanks to Paul Harcum's focus on this area, we've done a lot of work through the years uh, trying to understand this forest. And this is going to talk about the evolution of its, uh, what, we, what uh, we understand about it. And on the lower right there, you see a graph of one of our interpretations of how uh, these forests have evolved. And in contrast to uh, an adjacent forest, which we viewed as an anomaly because it was breaking up and a lot of trees were dying in windstorms. And we thought that that was very strange and we had felt compelled to explain it. Before I get any further, though, I would just want to thank the many people who worked on this project. Uh, there are probably over 100 individuals that have worked on this series of plots since they went in. Uh, here's just a few of them, and I'll give you a sense of uh, the methodology involved. It's quite simple. An area is set aside, and uh, the trees are tagged, and then people go out and revisit. Uh, the a check to see if the trees are alive or dead and other things about their status and they measure the diameter so it's a pretty straightforward set of activities they're not uh, mentally challenging but what is challenging is to persist and repeat these measurements time after time so what I want to do is give you a sense of why that's important to do so the plots were started in 1935 in an 81 year old stand um, they're scattered throughout the uh, Cascade Head Experimental Forest. These all came from the Nostucca fire, which is why they knew the age. And uh, I'm going to show you a series of graphs. Uh, you'll see, let's see if I can figure out the, so, well, actually, I can't point this in both directions. But um, <laughs> time here on the x-axis, and then it'll be biomass. And these are based on the Jenkins equations. So think of them as relative biomass. Uh, there are other equations we could use. You can see th uh, there's actually quite a spread of, of, uh, of biomass that they started with. Uh, not quite a factor of two, but quite, quite a range uh, of, of biomasses. So let's see what happens as the measurements went on. So after 20 years, this is the progression that was observed. You can see the different points or the different times. And at this point, uh, the thought was, well, we've learned everything we could ever learn from these plots. And according to Jerry Franklin, and, and we know Jerry always is a straight shooter with the truth. Uh, unlike me, I, I never elaborate. Um, but, but actually, he was hired one summer to work at Cascade Head, and his job was to pull all those uh, tags out of the trees because they knew exactly what was going to happen in these forests. And uh, if what they couldn't observe, they could model, because it's pretty clear what's going to happen, right? I mean, we can sort of extrapolate into the future. Uh, so what possibly could be learned? Of course, Jerry, always being the subversive, refused to do his job. That's probably too late now to fire him for it. But uh, So let's see actually what did occur. Well, the first thing is, you know, many of the plots kept going along, chugging along. Uh, but one of them, plot number six, was blown down in the, the uh, Columbus Day storm. And so that was salvaged. Uh, we think there probably were a number of live trees in there. Uh, some of the damaged ones are still there. So um, we don't think it killed the entire forest, but it, it was clear cut and the surrounding area. <clears throat> and that was viewed as kind of a tragedy, really. Uh, see, I, I don't exaggerate or anything. Um, but basically, this, this Columbus Day storm knocked down a lot of forests in the Northwest. It was amazing more of them weren't damaged. Uh, and so this was just attrition, you know, normal attrition uh, that occurs. As time went on, most of the plots continued on their merry way, kind of on that projected track that I'd given you. But plot 13 uh, had some damage, um, some blowdown in 1972 and a subsequent storm in 1981. And that was viewed as an anomalous plot. In fact, I can remember many discussions about why we shouldn't measure this anomaly. 
Um, it was just an unusual plot. It wasn't typical. We should abandon it. Now, the real reason was there were walls of logs over your head. It was covered with salmon berry. There was lots of seedlings, and you literally had to swim through that, that area just to make progress. Uh, often you were like 20 feet up in the air, so it was kind of scary. And then there were numerous generations of trees that came in and confusing assemblages of tags so no one could ever find the trees. Uh, it, was, it was really a mess, but we did persist in measuring it. So time goes on and you can see 13 uh, is starting to recover in a way. Uh, what's happening is lots of recruitment of trees and they're offsetting some of the losses. The rest of the plots are just going on their merry way, although there's uh, and uh, there's some indication maybe that uh, plot uh, one, which is the, the, the black circle, that's going down. But that could just be a normal little deviation. As time goes on, we're starting to see a couple more deviants appear. Um, and uh, they're not too far off the track, but there's starting to be some concerns. And actually, we started at this point to realize that our perception of what was normal might not be right, that there seemed to be a couple more abnormal plots than we had expected. And as time has gone on, we've seen that three of the plots have continued on their normal track, but most of the plots are actually abnormal. So that's where I get this idea of the new abnormal. The abnormal is actually for it to just keep going along. Now, uh, these were not all caused by uh, um, Single big storms, there was a big storm in 2007, you'll recall, that affected the coast. But some of these stands are starting to go through this progression actually well before that. And at this time, we also reestablished plot six because we realized, you know, that really wasn't abnormal. We shouldn't have abandoned it because it was weird. It, was, it just was a more extreme version of what the other stands are going through, so we reestablished it. Unfortunately, we really don't know what the recovery was uh, after that event, so we're up to maybe reconstruct it, but we've we basically lost an opportunity to see how these stands develop uh, by, by dismissing things that we viewed as abnormal. Now, if we look at the uh, average of all the plots, this is the biomass through time, we see up to about 2,000 or so, late 90s. It's acting exactly the way classic theory of ecology tells us, so ecosystem ecology, that basically at some point the, the input through production will be offset by mortality and it will be in a steady state. Trouble is it didn't stay in that state for very long. Maybe it'll go to a new one, uh, maybe it'll bounce around, that's what will be interesting in the future to see how this actually develops through time. Of course a lot of this is driven by mortality, this is the uh, annual mortality as expressed as a proportion of the, the biomass that exists. So uh, things like the, uh, the blowdown in, in, uh, in plot six seems to have a low mortality, but that's because there was a long period between measurements. Uh, not, nonetheless, we can see that there's been a big spike in mortality in some of the plots, but others are just hovering down around 1%. So this is actually a focus of, of current research now is to understand mortality. It's, it's extremely heterogeneous. Now let me show you the other side, the input, and this is net primary production of the bowl part. And we can see, although it's varied, and six of course went down very low after it was disturbed, it's been remarkably constant in contrast to, to, um, to mortality. Uh, up until the 80s and maybe the 90s, we were very, very interested in this, what seemed to be a decline in production. But we can see that it's either stabilized and maybe there's some evidence it's actually gone up as the stand has become disturbed. Uh, and here's, here's the mean of that. Uh, we've got a few curiosities we have to investigate in this data. We're wondering why plot five got so high. Uh, productivity was so high in one period, but nonetheless it seems like it's gone down and then perhaps it's coming back up again uh, as the stand is, is developing. Now, what do these stands look like now? Uh, this is just one shot, but um, we see some of the original trees from the stuck of fire, the larger ones, we see them on the ground and standing. 
but we also see a, a big uh, recruitment of small trees, small hemlocks primarily, and some of these are growing at phenomenal rates. Uh, in a five-year period, they, they could put on five to 10 centimeters of diameter growth. So these, these little trees are really cranking at this point. I could have um, also given the sort of similar story with the density of the trees. I won't walk you through each phase uh, as I did before, but you can see um, early on that there's a decline in density of trees. This is the original cohort from the fire thinning out uh, and about a rate about 1% per year. Uh, but then we see somewhere in the 70s, uh, 80s, there's an increase in, in numbers uh, of trees. And now we measure things that are five centimeter and higher dbh. So there were lots of seedlings. In fact, many of these stands had carpets of hemlock seedlings that had been there for decades. They were almost like little shrubs and they just weren't growing hardly at all. Well, by the 80s, these actually start to grow and, the, and, and that's part of what's going on. Some of this was driven by the um, by the openings that were created by wind, but some of them, some of this increases in stands that actually uh, had pretty increasing biomass. So uh, a couple of the plots, actually th the three that had increasing biomass, two of them uh, had great increases in, in seedling reproduction. And we can see that good old stand three, the red dots there, that's, that's the one that behaved just the way we would have predicted it. But it's the only one that behaved the way we would have predicted it. So um, I'd like to thank you and, and just show you how easy it is going to be to walk around there. I know you all want to volunteer your efforts to try to come out here and contribute to this ongoing story. Um, but actually, uh, what's been fascinating is, is plots that used to take us half a day to, to inventory now take us several days. But it's, I think it's really well worth it. Anyways, at this point, I, I guess I'll turn it over to any discussion or top uh, questions that you might have.